Aiden Hutchinson put on a show last week against Carolina. He had an interception, a sack, and eight quarterback pressures, six of which came from his primary matchup against Panthers right tackle Taylor Moten, who in 84 career starts over eight NFL seasons, had never allowed more than five pressures in a game. Hutchinson gave Moten, who has been a very solid pass protector for nearly a decade, the worst statistical outing of his NFL career. This level of dominance is becoming the weekly expectation for the former number two overall pick in his second season as a pro. After that week five performance, Hutchinson now ranks first in the NFL in quarterback pressures with 35. He's also tied for 14th in sacks and ranks ninth among qualifying edge rushers in pass rush win rate. These numbers are indicative of a significant leap in performance from Hutchinson in year two over year one. At this point last season, Hutchinson was tied for 29th in pressures with 15, and tied for 68th of 80 qualifiers in pass rush win rate. Despite having only one more sack than he did at this point last year, Hutchinson's pass rush numbers have skyrocketed. So this week, I'll explain how Hutchinson has quickly become one of the league's best pass rushers in his sophomore season. Like any good NFL edge rusher, Hutchinson's range of pass rush moves revolves around the ability to turn speed to power with a bull rush. A threatening bull rush will prompt opposing tackles to anchor and punch to initiate contact, which a good pass rusher will then counter with complementary hand combat moves. When tackles aren't threatened by power, they'll let the pass rusher initiate contact by not shooting their hands and leaving their chest open. Edge rushers who can't beat a passive tackle with power won't ever get that tackle to shoot his hands, and as a result, will rarely sniff the quarterback. It's impossible to be a complete NFL pass rusher without a consistent bull rush in the arsenal, because high quality tackles who aren't threatened by power will just leave their chest open. That's what Lane Johnson did back in week one of 2022. In a not so warm welcome to the league, the Eagles all pro tackle allowed zero pressures to Aiden Hutchinson in his pro debut, limiting Hutchinson to nothing more than a whole lot of cardio. Take a look at this play from the first quarter of that week one matchup. Hutchinson is lined up on the right half of your screen, matched up against Johnson, and I want you to pay attention to Johnson's hands as I slow this down. Notice that Johnson shoots his right hand before Hutchinson makes contact. This fake punch is known as the flash technique, and is used by offensive linemen to prompt defensive linemen to deploy a hand counter like a swipe or a chop. Tackles will often pair the flash technique with the hug technique, to prevent defensive linemen from winning to the outside or inside. But the weakness of the hug technique is it allows pass rushers easy access to the tackle's chest, making them vulnerable to power rushes. Hutchinson didn't fall for the flash here. When Johnson pulled the fake punch back and left his chest open, Hutchinson went with power right at Johnson's open chest. But despite a large target surface for the power rush, Johnson was still able to anchor down and prevent Hutchinson from winning the rep. Johnson continued to use the hug technique for the rest of the game because he wasn't threatened by Hutchinson's power. Johnson sold out to stop the counter rushes and was rewarded with a clean stat line. Hutchinson could beat Big Ten tackles with power, but he couldn't do it in the NFL, at least not right away. There was gradual improvement in his power rushes during his rookie season, but he wasn't a complete rusher even by week 18. This season, that isn't the case. According to Pro Football Focus, in 2022, Hutchinson went with a bull rush on 10.7% of his pass rush snaps. 14.7% of those reps resulted in pressure on the quarterback. This year, Hutchinson is using a bull rush slightly more frequently than last year, and when he does, he's winning nearly three times as often. Winning with power was Hutchinson's greatest weakness as a pass rusher in his rookie season, but this year, it's one of his biggest strengths. With the ability to win in multiple ways, Hutchinson can now string together pass rush moves to consistently generate pressure on a snap-to-snap -snap basis. I'm going to use a few plays from Detroit's Week 1 game against Kansas City as an example of what this looks like in action. Here, the Chiefs are facing 3rd and 7, and Hutchinson is in a 4 technique, aligned head up on the right tackle, but will match up with the right guard, Trey Smith. Like Lane Johnson in the clip I showed you earlier, Smith uses the flash technique here, and that prompts Hutchinson to use what's known as a swipe or side scissors pass rush move. Because Smith took his hand away, there was nothing for Hutchinson to swipe at. The hand counter didn't land, but Hutchinson transitioned to a rip move to bend into the pocket and drew a holding penalty that forced Kansas City into a third and 17. On that following third and long play, Hutchinson again matched up with Trey Smith, and this time went with a power rush. 
It wasn't the cleanest of wins, and Mahomes got the ball off in time, but Smith was threatened by Hutchinson's power here, and that threat would carry over into the following play. Hutchinson was again lined up in the four technique, matched up with Smith, and anticipating a power rush like he saw on the last play, Smith shot his hands early. Hutchinson took advantage of Smith's aggressiveness by countering the punch with a club swim combination to the inside, allowing him to slip through the A-gap and put pressure on Mahomes. The results weren't necessarily ideal, as Kansas City produced explosive plays on two of the three reps I just showed you, but this is high-quality tape. Hutchinson is not only beating offensive linemen, but also using those wins to set up other moves on subsequent snaps. He did this in even more impressive fashion last week against Carolina. On this third down from the first quarter, Hutchinson is lined up in a wide nine technique on the left half of your screen opposite Panthers right tackle Taylor Moten. Post-snap, Hutchinson puts vertical stress on the tackle's pass set by working north to south, before flattening his angle to the quarterback and turning his speed to power. It wasn't as clean of a win as some of the reps you'll see after this, but it forced Bryce Young to leave the pocket, and more importantly, forced Taylor Moten to respect the threat of the power rush. A few minutes later, Carolina faced another third down, and Hutchinson again lined up out wide opposite Taylor Moten. Post-snap, he again works north to south, and the threat of the power rush prompts Moten to shoot his hands. But instead of turning his speed to power here, Hutchinson hit Moten with a lethal counterspin to exploit the tackle's forward lean. The ball was out quickly, but this was a high-quality rep, and would force Moten back into a more passive approach to blocking Hutchinson. A few plays later, Hutchinson went back to power. The bull rush right through Moten's chest, walked him back into the pocket, and forced the quarterback to extend. This alternation of moves would pop up again later in the game when Carolina faced another third down. Hutchinson's speed caused Moten to overset and punch, which Hutchinson exploited with another clean counterspin to put pressure on the quarterback. This counterspin has been Hutchinson's most effective changeup since he was playing at Michigan, but he didn't win with it all that often last season because tackles could sell out to stop it. Now that he threatens opposing tackles with power, Hutchinson can use the counterspin with greater frequency and effectiveness. Now, it's important to keep in mind that a significant chunk of Hutchinson's success as a pass rusher is a result of effort rather than efficiency. Here, you can see win rate in under 3 seconds plotted against pressure rate in under 3 seconds for every edge rusher with at least 20 pressures. Guys toward the top right get to the quarterback in under 3 seconds the most often, while guys in the bottom left owe a greater degree of their success to cleanup and coverage pressures. Having a high motor obviously isn't a bad thing, but pressures generated in under 3 seconds are simply more valuable than pressures generated in over 3 seconds. And right now, Hutchinson is generating more of the latter. His development is coming along very well, but he isn't on the level of guys like Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, and Micah Parsons in terms of getting to the quarterback. Hutchinson does, however, complement his pass rush ability with instincts that you don't often see in guys his age. Even when rushing the passer, Hutchinson always has one eye on the ball, which often leads to splash plays. Two of his biggest plays in Week 5 against Carolina came as a result of his instincts, first of which came on this second down in the first quarter. Hutchinson is aligned outside of the tight end on the left half of your screen, and Carolina called a tight end screen pass off of play action, targeting the tight end lined up opposite Hutchinson, Ian Thomas. As Hutchinson felt Thomas peel off to catch the screen pass, he knew the ball was coming out, so he got his hand into the passing lane and picked it off. Later in the game, Carolina faced a third and long from their own 30-yard line, and by this point, Hutchinson had given Taylor Moten enough trouble on the edge, so the Panthers started to chip him with a tight end to disrupt his rush plan. Now, Hutchinson knows that there's nobody rushing the A-gap or the B-gap to his side. He knows that if Bryce Young tries to leave the pocket, he's likely to step up into the empty space to the left side of your screen. So before Young even begins to climb the pocket, Hutchinson pulls off a counterspin to occupy the B-gap, and gets rewarded with a sack when Young attempts to extend. While he might not get to the quarterback as efficiently as the NFL's best pass rushers, Hutchinson is still going to create a similar amount of splash plays as a result of his effort and instincts. Those traits aren't worth quite as much as power or bend, but they're worth something, and Hutchinson has a healthy combination of both athleticism and a relentless play style to complement it. Because of his abnormally short arms, Hutchinson will always be at least somewhat limited as a run defender, but these days, the pass rush is paramount. And right now, there aren't a lot of guys doing it better than Aiden Hutchinson. 
But that's all I've got for today. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon and Twitter, both of which will be linked in the description. Not sure what I'm going to cover next week, but I'm on a bit of a pass rush kick at the moment, so don't be surprised if you see something on Miles Garrett or Philadelphia's defensive line coming your way soon. So, until then, peace.